so this demo actually has been around for a bit. It actually started at the developer kitchen last summer and has evolved somewhat since then, although it could use a bit of cosmetic work, I think, but that's all right. Um, and and the idea here is there's there's some patterns that I've noticed in custom solutions for collaboration over the years. And one of them I call the 360 degree collaboration pattern. The idea is to give users who are collaborating a 360 degree view or, or mashup of the business that they're doing, of some particular business entity. So for instance, a property management company might have a complete view of a property, consulting company might have a complete view of a, of a consulting project, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so that's the basis of the demo. In this case, we've got some insurance adjusters, and if you've never dealt with these folks, you're really, I mean, they're mostly nice folks, but there's, you're still lucky because usually something bad happened that you have to go call and, and say, hey, my, I had a problem in my building or my car or something, and the adjuster comes out and decides how to pay your claim. <clears throat> they also uh, inspect new buildings and new construction. So here they're, they're working together in Microsoft Teams, and they're using the Teams channel uh, the team's meeting facility for coordinating their work. So, for instance, Katie's going to go, uh, who is my current user, she's going to go uh, check out some fire damage uh, this morning, and um, and then uh, I guess she's got a conflict here because she's got to be in two places at once, which is kind of tricky. So I can see what my team is doing by just looking at the calendar, and these these have the advantage that they go into the channel so everybody in the team can see them, but they also go into your personal calendar if you're if you're listed over here. But this is a really hard way to see what's going on in the team. So hence this field visits tab, which is which is the demo. So this is written in SharePoint framework, of course, or else I would not be on this call. And you'll notice that what it did was it it went and found everything on the calendar, broke it down by user, selected Katie because she's the currently logged in user, and now uh, here's that Hungry Coyote imports, and I can see everything that's going on. So this is the 360 degree view. The idea being, anything you need to know about in in order to prepare for this visit is all in one place. So this is mainly using the graph API. This is kind of POC quality code, um, meaning I, I think it's structured for that you could add onto it and productionalize it without starting over again if you wanted to. But basically, you know, the data is this is mock data here, uh, these activities. These documents are in SharePoint, they're tagged with the customer ID of the customer. Um, the photos are also in SharePoint, uh, similarly tagged. Um, I've got the weather, current weather conditions at the customer location. Uh, the customer database is our, our old friend, the Northwind database, exposed in its OData server. I can even see where the thing is. So everything's here, and that's kind of the concept. So what does this demo show? Well, first it shows how to take a SharePoint framework web part and make it work in Teams. So this does work in both environments. Um, another thing it shows is how to call the Graph API and how to actually interact with the team and the Office 365 group and the SharePoint site that are inside of that team. So what's interesting about this, I often get questions uh, from developers who I'm helping out, hey, how come I can't, um, I, I've got this Teams API and it won't let me talk to the team. How do I get to the rest of the team? And so the answer is, well, there's, Actually, you have to use the Teams API to get the group ID and some other information, and then you use the Graph API to go after the data. So you see that here. We're actually coming in, and this calendar is uh, being accessed via the Microsoft Graph. Um, then the other thing that you can do here is Katie obviously has a scheduling conflict, so help, I have a schedule conflict can someone take this and and she can't I don't have spell check in there yet <laughs> but anyway um, here it is here's the the message now has turned up in the channel if I switch over to my user you'll see that I can see this coming from Katie and if I click on the item it's going to deep link me back into the tab and it's actually going to select the same meeting that she mentioned. So now I don't have to 
think how many emails this saves, going back and forth with Katie, where is the meeting, who am I supposed to talk to, and hey, it's all here, right, with one click. So that's the concept. There's a blog series on this, which the first article explains the concept of 360-degree collaboration. Then the second one talks about how to use the APIs. And if I had a little more time, I, I don't, I'm trying to kind of catch up here, so I'm not going to go into it, but uh, this goes into some detail on how to use the Teams API to get enough information to call the Graph API. And then finally, deep linking is covered in this third article, which, uh, Vesa, I have updated the article based on something that you and Waldex said the other day. Um, this deep link format is indeed a documented and supported um, link format. What is missing is the SharePoint framework part. So um, here's, the, here's the link format, and yes, it's a complex format that, um, uh, let's see, there's a way to do it with the SDK and have a pop-up, but there's also this format here, which I documented in my blog article, and yeah, it's all official, and they can't, they're not going to change it without letting us know because, you know, this is all uh, part of the official documentation. However, um, what you'll notice is that there are, this documentation only covers um, configurable tabs and static tabs. It does not cover uh, SharePoint framework tabs yet. So that would be something I actually submitted a, a, a comment here yesterday asking for someone to fill that in. Um, it turns out that there are two things that you can pass to yourself in order to deep link. So uh, deep linking, it's going to get you to the right team, to the right channel, to the right tab. And then your tab gets a couple of things that it can use to know, in this case, to get to the right meeting within that tab. Uh, and that those are the entity and the sub-entity. Well, it turns out that SharePoint Framework uses the entity ID, which it kind of has to, because um, when you add your tab to Teams, the configuration experience, that's when the entity ID is, is decided. So that's already there, and you can't really change it. But the sub-entity ID does not seem to be used by SharePoint Framework, so I guess the, the confirmation that this is fully supportable would probably be limited to just saying, hey, can we, can we be assured that SharePoint Framework is not going to start using the sub-entity ID at some point in the future and thus prevent uh, solutions like mine from, uh, from using it safely? Uh, but right now, this actually does work. And um, if we take a quick peek at the code, um, you can see that here in the, I have to show some code, right, or else it wouldn't be a proper uh, demo on this call. Um, here I'm actually grabbing out of the Teams context with all this proper null checking, thanks to the extra linting in SPFX um, 1.8. Um, here I'm grabbing the entity ID, which was defined, I just have to, I just have to have that. Right, I just have to use that in my deep link. Uh, and then the sub-entity ID, which I'm going to use myself to, to pre-load the correct meeting at runtime. And I'm passing all those things into my root, um, into my root component in SPFX. So I think I'm going to stop here. I'm just happy for any input. I would love to collaborate with a, a visual designer to make this look better. I am very humbled by my lack of design skills. So. This is what you get um, from me. But anyway, um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to share this out. And, um, and everything, all the details are in the blog, and it's up on that same repo where the React one was with the, um, the uh, SP, Dev, uh, SP Dev FX samples web part or web part samples. Great, yeah, we'll get that shared out. Uh, super great demo.